Sharks, as many of us will know, are a diverse group of animals, and especially so in extinct forms, with some possessing feather-like denticles and others being massive in size. A new fossil described from the Mexican states of Nuevo Leon has now revealed another example of the diversity they once possessed, and it goes to show what still remains in the Earth's vast strata, and what could still be out there, just waiting to be found. The so far only specimen being extremely well preserved was recovered in 2012 by an unknown quarryman, and later came to the attention of local paleontologist Margarito Gonzalez, who managed to acquire and prepare the specimen, with this over the coming years receiving increasing attention at paleontological conferences, being finally described in 2021. The remains date to around 93 million years ago during the Turonian age of the Lake Cretaceous, with the formation it was found in, the Agua Nueva, being thought to have been composed of sediments deposited in the outer parts of a shallow continental shelf in what was once the Western Interior Seaway that splits North America in two. Names Aquilo Lamna Malarque, meaning eagle shark, the species name is made in reference to the museum in which it will eventually be housed, with the fossil itself being exceptionally well preserved, unusual for sharks and other non-bony fish which is due to largely being composed of cartilage, therefore decomposing rather quickly, although the depositional environment of fine sediments assisted in preserving the remains. The fossil does preserve the outline of the body, which reveals the bizarre animal in great detail, with them possessing a long tail, round head, and noticeably elongated pectoral fins. While the pectoral fins are the main distinguishing characteristic of the animal, there is no apparent trace of dorsal, pelvic, or anal fins, which could either be down to original morphology or a true phylogenetic absence, or a taphonomic loss through disarticulation and degradation. This has led to some debates on which is the right position, although given that no other celashomorph, the clay to which all modern sharks belong to, lack all of these fins, and given Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is typically the most likely, which was likely taphonomic loss, although only the discovery of new material will truly resolve this issue. The head of Aquilo Lamna was short and broad, with a wide and near-terminal mouth, with there being no teeth being preserved, although this was likely down to rapid post-mortem, disarticulation and scattering, as the teeth of other Elasmobranch taxa, i.e. Pithecodus and Crotoxorhina, are generally found preserved alongside the skeleton, although this is likely due to their larger size, and this may suggest that the teeth of Aquilo Lamna were more easily lost after death due to their small size, likely under 5mm, which does have implications for their niche and diet. Other teeth from the same region and time period, first classified in 1990 as ray teeth, were later found to be from some form of shark, and these could very well belong to Aquilo Lamina, given their niche and the now established presence in the formation. The newly erected family being Aquilo Lamnidae also possibly includes the enigmatic and poorly known genera Cretomanta and Platylithophycus, with systematic and paleoecological assumptions combined with stratigraphic evidence, suggesting that the tooth-based genus Cretomanta may be a suitable candidate also for being the dental element of the skeleton-based Aquilo Lamna, as their teeth are characterised as being simple, minute and hooked being less than 2mm high, indicative of planktivory. While Aquilo Lamna is considered to be a member of the Lamniformes order, grouping it alongside the mackerel sharks, including the familiar great wise and threshers, as well as the unique megamouth and goblin sharks, their taxonomy is still in contention, as despite the holotype being very well preserved, even possessing potential skin impressions although they could just be fossilised bacterial mats, because no teeth are known, it does make classifying them much harder, as they are important in determining specific taxonomic affinities, which are only possible through teeth, and while the teeth are thought to have been dislodged when the animal dies, they could very well be preserved deeper in the matrix, so a closer look at the remains may resolve this issue. To clarify their habitat and niche, the caudal fin shape of sharks is one of the key indicators of their primary habitats and lifestyle with there being four main types of caudal fins identified thus far. The caudal fin of Aquilo Lamna is present in most active swimming oceanic species, being well developed and being heterocircle, where the tail has unequal upper and lower lobes, with the vertebral column passing into the upper, well distinct from that of benthic species. 
Their most noticeable characteristic, and what gave them their name, is their remarkable, hypertrophic pectoral fins, which are quite reminiscent to manta and devil rays, even though they are far removed and unrelated. The wingspan of these fins makes it so that Aquilo lamina was wider than they were long, with them being rather broad at their base, slightly forward directed, and gently recurved at their ends, being more similar in design to gliders and planes, than to the more wing-like shape of the aforementioned rays. Due to this, they most likely acted as stabilisers, although they may have also been useful in some propulsion and manoeuvring through slow flapping motions. To assess their ecomorphotype, the morphological modification caused by or related to specific ecological conditions, the specimen of Aquilo lamina was measured based on its proportions and then compared to other sharks as to find what animals they would have been most comparable to niche-wise. This part of the study found that Aquilo lamina was most closely associated with Aquilopelagic and or Aradrobenthic ecology, which makes sense given its close resemblance to modern rays. The holotype and so far single known specimen of Aquilo lamina is a medium-sized animal with a specimen in question measuring around 1.65 metres in length and having a fin span of 1.9. It is undetermined whether this specimen represents a juvenile, subadult, or adult juvenile, and whether or not this was the maximum size attainable. This is particularly interesting, as if the enigmatic genus Plasilithophycus, known by a single specimen, representing a large individual can be proven to be an Aquilo lamnid. This would suggest an evolutionary pathway towards gigantism in this lineage of Cretaceous sharks as being from the Niobrara Formation, also dates to around 87 to 82 million years ago, meaning that they were around after Aquilo Lamna. However, this is still quite a speculative and out there idea, and it is not yet known whether Aquilo Lamnids arose from medium-sized benthic ancestors, large pelagic ancestors, or medium-sized pelagic ancestors. Either way, this discovery shows that the diversity of sharks was even higher than we knew of, and that new and strange forms are just waiting to be discovered and described, sometimes out of nowhere as can be the case. This body plan in particular represents an evolutionary experimentation with underwater flights, more than 30 million years before the evolution of Mobulidae, the Manta and Devil Rays, which are unrelated and distantly so. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.